you bit Steve from that old Yorkshire Geeks. It's time to review uh, episode five of season five, the final season of uh, Star Trek Lower Decks. Uh, this is called Starbase 80. Because it's got a question mark and an exclamation mark at the end. <laughs> well, Starbase 80. That's how you've got to say it. Um, and it's it's an okay episode. Um, I don't know if it's I don't think it's connected to the overall story arc that we've been having about the um, 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 quantum fissures. Uh, I don't think they're mentioned in this episode. But it's a fun episode. Kind of a Halloween episode because it's kind of got a zombie-ish flavour to it. But uh, we'll get into that. We'll get into that as we as we go on. Uh, right, so we'll uh, we'll have a look. But before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribe for God's sake! We're so close to a thousand still. Just can't get over a thousand subscribers, can? I? Never mind. Uh, so do that and share the videos, and drop a comment, and all that stuff. Uh, explore the description uh, for links for various things. Um, Merch, Patreon, uh, etc. Me books. There's one of them. <laughs> uh, and all that stuff. Right, so uh, let's get the episode up. We'll go through it and uh, and I'll review it. So here we go. Right, so we we'll begin. Um, the, uh, I nearly said Enterprise then. The Cerritos is, um, has just been um, on a mission to some planet, can't remember the name of it, but um, it was a, like a, a, a watery planet, um, if I recall correctly, and the uh, Cetacean Ops people, Lieutenant Matt from Cetacean Ops have been on an away mission. Um, oh, there we go, and we see the our erstwhile crew of, they're not lower deckers anymore, are they? Uh, they've been promoted, they're all lieutenants now, but uh, there they go. they're all in their um, um, wetsuits and stuff, and they're back from... Uh, this mission, as you can see, Boimler's facial hair is coming along nicely, isn't it? Um, I imagine by the end of the season, he'll have a full face, full beard, or something will happen, <laughs> and he won't. Um, but anyway, um, we're learning that Mariner's becoming this model officer who loves doing things and loves going on away missions and and all this stuff. She's becoming, uh, she's not the Mariner we knew from the first, probably the first three seasons, because it's season four. Well, I suppose in season four she were kind of she was just breaking away from being the, the bad mariner, uh, but now she's fully the, you know a, a good officer, uh, which she kind of regrets in this episode. Anyway, uh, so that's it. They've been to this this ocean world, and they've got the algae that glowed in the dark, and um, Lieutenant Matt, who's one of the the dolphins or whatever I don't know what they are from um, porpoises from cetacean ops. I hate cetacean ops. <laughs> All because they're only in there because of the bloody blueprints, aren't they? But the Enterprise D blueprints. They put flaming cetacean ops in there. Does my head in. All because of Star Trek frigging for. But anyway. Anyway. Um so uh, a red alert is called, there we go, and um they all head to the bridge. It's some still in their wetsuits, boimler. Uh Naked. Uh, oh, so is um, Rutherford. Uh, not naked, but, you know, um, semi-naked. Um, right, so, anyway, um, the the computer, the nav computer starts shutting down. Something's happened with um, uh, Cetacean Ops, because they help with navigation, apparently. Um, and uh, is it going to is it gonna show us? Are we going to see? There we go. Uh, it's Lieutenant Matt and another one. Why are they wearing uniforms? <laughs> Is this the first time we've seen them in uniform? Maybe not, I can't remember. But um, they start freaking out and weird stuff happens. Um, here we go, I'm going to show it. Um, there you go. Uh, weird stuff's happening to them. So, um, so they've got to uh, sort them out, uh, and, but they've got to fix their navigation thingamabob. And the, the nearest place they can do it is Starbase 80, as in this diagram. Uh, and if you remember, Starbase 80 is like the, the rubbish Starbase. It's where all the idiots from Starfleet go or are sent. Um, Mariner was sent there, I think, last season, season four. Uh, she didn't like it. Um, but I don't know, it seems to me, it seems like a very different place to the one we saw last season. 
the, the one we see in this episode, I think. Um, but anyway, maybe we just saw a small part of it. Anyway, so they've got to head there, and they're all saying, no, we can't go to Starbase 80, and, and, and Mariner's freaking out. No, can't go back there, but, you know, they've got to. So, anyway, they're right there, so they're off to Starbase 80. And then the credits begin, uh, which I always watch. Sometimes I skip the credits um, on other Star Trek shows. For some reason, I always watch the Lower Decks credits. Um, mainly because I want to see if they've added anything new to this part, but I don't think they have. I don't think they have. Uh, not that I've noticed, uh, but I probably wouldn't notice anyway, even if they had. Um, let's have a look. I still, what, what, what's that? What is that ship there? Wind Grace will know. Uh, that's an Orion ship, isn't it? But I don't know what that is. It goes whizzing by really quickly. Is it? It can't be, can it? Oh, poo. Press the wrong bolt because I'm stupid. <laughs> it goes by really fast, look. I don't know what it is. Anyway. Uh, and there's Vija arriving in the background. Anyway, right, so, and the Tholian web. Right, so, they're going to arrive at, um, what's that there, what's happening there? Oh, it's that, isn't it, right. Um, I still, I still want to know why that's there. <laughs> why, why, why has it got a dint? Um, and who's, are, the, are these cabins around this area here? Because, you know, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to be uh, in a cabin that's just facing other cabins. You want, you want to see the stars, don't you? Not somebody else's window. I know I said that last time, but uh, it's true. It irks me. I want to know why that's there. Right, so off we go. Here it is, Starbase 80, and the Cerritos is docked there. And uh, we see a few ships flying about as well. Is it going to show? Oh, never mind. Uh, we see a few, you know, shuttles and stuff flying about. So it is a working starbase, despite everybody there being apparently incompetent. But they seem to get by. Um, so anyway, they head out to the uh, to the, the starbase. They've got to get this, you know, a new navigational thingamabob. Uh, does it tell? I can't bloody remember what it is. The need um, navigational processor, something like that. Um, is it going to tell us? Is it going to tell us? Uh, bu, 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 bu. No, it didn't, is it? Never mind. Right, so they go, and the, oh, ah, yes, they've got to put the decon gel on. And um, we saw it in the trailer, didn't we? We all thought, oh, they're going to travel back in time to the Enterprise days. No, they're not. Apparently, Starships still have a decon chamber, just in case. Um, because apparently, there's lice <laughs> on Starbase 80, so they've got to put de the gel on. And Boimler's saying, oh, I feel so to Paul now. And Ransom's loving it. Um, there you go, he's, he's laying it on thick. Uh, which comes in handy later on. Anyway, so off they go. On to, uh, on to Starbase 80. And then we meet uh, this character, who we learn is an Elorian. And for some reason, she's got an Enterprise-era uh, uniform on. Um, you know, the NX-01 uh, uniform. And now I was thinking, well, we've just seen the decon, ch decon chamber, and now we're seeing a, 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 you know, an NX-01 era uniform. Um, what is it? Is that connected? You know, is there something coming up? But apparently not. But uh, anyway, there we see they've still got the old style wall communicator stuff. Uh, I think even the design on the wall kind of looks TOS era, kind of, doesn't it? With the coloured pipes and stuff. But anyway. Um, she thinks they've been sent there to help with the repairs and says, no, we're here for repairs ourselves. And she's going to tell us what they're after. Um, are they a new navigational processor, that's what they need, right. Um, but um, she says, yes, so they can go to, got to go see the chief engineer. So anyway, the others are sent off to, to do all the stuff. Anywho... Uh, oh, aye, they get to the, I think this is main engineering, and uh, apparently the grav plating's not working properly, so they have to use this pole to uh, to uh, get to engineering, because everything's on the ceiling, and they've not, they've not had it fixed. Anyway, so, oh, aye, they're selling corn dogs, because something's wrong with the replicators or something like that, so they've got all these vendors about selling uh, food and stuff. Anyway, uh, Rutherford's going to gonna fix the, uh, the gravity... Uh, um, stuff uh, eventually. Oh, right, then we see he uses this communicator, and then we see these green sparks. 
Um, and then he starts acting strange. And, and it turns out, every time somebody uses the communicator uh, to contact the Cerritos, essentially, they essentially turn into zombies or, you know, or something along those lines. Uh, that's what we learn. Uh, this is the chief engineer, um, again, in a Enterprise-era uniform. Have they just not got sent new uniforms in, like, 200 years? Obviously not. Right, so... Um, so they're all, you know, they're all on their missions to do stuff. He's, he keeps sending them on side missions, essentially to fix stuff, uh, because he can't fix them himself, because apparently Starfleet... Um, they keep putting in requests for repairs and stuff and equipment, but because it's Starbase 80, I think Starfleet just kind of forgets about it. So that's what he does. He, he sends them on missions to, to fix, on side missions to fix things uh, before they can get to, you know, where uh, the uh, navigational processor is. Um, uh, meanwhile, uh, the other lot, the lower deckers, um, they've got like a promenade, isn't it? It's a bit like Deep Space Nine, they've got a promenade. And um, it turns out there's lots of Akamarians on the on the station, uh, which I think were from the uh, epi the TNG episode, Venge what it, Vengeance Factor, the one with the lovely Lisa Wilcox in it that gets uh, Riker's forced to um, uh, basically vaporise her. Because uh, it turns out she's an assassin, but uh, I think it, I think they're the Akamarians. Uh, they're on this. Uh, yeah, there she is. There's one there. Looks. They can tell they've got facial tattoos, and uh, this is all oh, of these um, non. I think it said non-replicated uniforms. It says they're the uniforms of long dead men. And she goes, "Oh, cool." Anyway, so. Uh, oh, I see. There's still old TOS era uh, uh, turbo lift controls, and obviously nothing works properly. Um, they, they end up somewhere down below, and there we go. Here's the Cerritos crew that's on the station. Start turning into like zombie-like creatures. Uh, this were like they were the f very first episode, I think, had this happen. So <clears throat> I think on the farm planet, wasn't it? That I thought we were going to revisit last week, but we didn't. Um, but it turns out it's the communicators. We learn why. Um, at first, I thought, is this going to be connected to what happened to the Vulcans in um, in Enterprise? You know, because we've seen lots of mentions of Enterprise stuff in this uh, this episode. I thought it was going to be connected to the Vulcans from uh, the episode. Um, I forgot what they were called. When in episode uh, season three, where they went into the uh, Delphic Expanse. Um, they found that, that, that Vulcan ship where they essentially they become zombies at the Vulcans, aren't they? I forgot what the name of the episode is. Um, oh, I can't remember. Uh, but they couldn't control themselves and they, they become mindless zombies. I thought it was going to be something connected to that, but it's not. It's not, it seems. But they've all gone a bit crazy and all start licking the walls and stuff like that. And then Rutherford's gone. Rutherford, because he used his communicator, remember? So, oh, well, just notice there. Uh, Old TOS movie era away team jacket. Uh, my mate's got one of them. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. And a, a, a phaser rifle there. Uh, sorry, I'm just noticing all this stuff in the background. Old tricorders, TOS era tricorders and communicators, look. Hey, cool. Cool knobs. <laughs> so I just noticed that there at the back. Knobs. Anyway. Right, so the fact they keep finding this uh, the engineer, and he keeps sending them on doing this stuff. You know, oh, we're trying to fix this, and they end up fixing stuff. So that's what he's doing. He's getting them fixing stuff before he can give them the navigational process. So there she is fixing this. Um, anyway, um, oh, wow, they meet this fella. This is uh, the doctor. Oh, there we go, Harrison Horseberry, cool name. And he's kind of half turned into the creature. Uh, what is it that Geordi LaForge turned into in that that episode? Is it that? Is it that one? I think it was Geordi wanted that turned into uh, this alien creature. Uh, I can't remember the name of the episode. I can't remember, but uh, it was pretty early, I think, in the TNG run. I think I could be wrong. Um, but he's like half turned, um, and he says it's hardly that people keep telling me it's hardly noticeable. Have they got mirrors? Oh, apparently not. Anyway. 
Uh, oh, she's saying it's Tarkanon Parasites. And he says, no, it's not. It's not Tarkanon Parasites. It's something else. Um, oh, right, and then she, she grabs... Because Boy, um, Mariner's about to use her communicator. She grabs it and breaks the communicator. And um, I don't know... Somehow she knows that the communicator's the problem. And then she says, have you noticed the crew starts acting weird when they use the communicator? She's worked it out. So um, Anyway... So they have a bit of a fight. Then Boimler's turned, look, oh no, they're all going wrong. And then they meet some Akamarians, there's the captain and Ransom, uh, because they've got to go to this the arcade, and they're, they're going to get beaten up, but they end up being given tokens, free tokens. There we go, here's some extra tokens on the house. So they end up being nice. <laughs> anyway, um, so they end up giving them the uh, the processor. Uh, you know, he said, we needed the, I needed people to come and fix things uh, and they find out right they eventually find out um, there you go there, uh, that um, what it is it's a um, I forgot what calling now An anaphasic is it anaphasic something like that just bear with me um, I've seen it somewhere um, yes anaph an anaphasic life form which, which has a name it's called Clem uh, it turns out um, it's that that's been causing the problems and it were on the planet the 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 the, you know the ocean planet that they'd just been to, and it had possessed Lieutenant Matt, you know the dolphin chap, um, and it's uh, and it, and then it's gone round all the crew through the communicators and stuff, uh, possessing all the others, but not on purpose, and and it found itself spread too thin, and it couldn't control itself, uh, which is why the crew are all doing daft stuff like activating the self destruct and all that stuff. Anyway, so they, they sort that out, and there you go, there's Clem being all possessed, and they, they sort it out, and they, I think they get it in a box or something like that, um, and uh, they sort it out, and then uh, everything goes back to normal, and uh, there it is in a box, and uh, it's, it's speak, you can speak to them, um, I don't know if it's the same sort that from that Sub Rosa episode, uh, the, the infamous Sub Rosa episode, it's the same sort of anaphasic life form, probably not. You know, that that seduced Dr. Crusher, I think it's a different sort. Um, but anyway, he apologises and it's going to be good and stuff. And it turns out it's 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 uh, an officer in the an anaphasic life form military service or something. And it was trying to uh, impress its boss and... Uh, but anyway, uh, anyway, they, they decide that they keep it on the station. Um, no, she's a full commander. I've just noticed. Uh, they decide to keep it on the station. So anyway, so everything everything ends well, and they've made friends, and they've gone round fixing things on the station. And it turns out, um, Starbase Eight isn't as bad as they thought after all. Um, but uh, anyway, um, oh, but first <laughs> it ends um, that. Um, you know, they've got the the nav um, oh no they didn't need that was it they didn't I don't think they needed the navigational processor because the, you know the cured uh, the dolphins you know cetacean up so they can navigate again now I think or maybe they do get it whatever uh, but not before um, Captain Freeman and Ransom have got to clear out the rats or is it bats no it's bats isn't it clear out the bats from this thing and it turns out there's one more left and it's uh, a giant bat. Um, there it is, and I've got to deal with that. So she's going in to sort that out. So. And that's how the episode ends. So. Another kind of kind of another filler episode, to be completely honest. Um, but I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. But um, another one that doesn't progress the, the overall arc. At least in last week's, you know, with the Klingon farmers, uh, we did get a mention of the quantum fishes at the end. Uh, kind of tacked on, but in this one it's you know, something completely different. Uh, unless I missed it, but uh, anyway, but it was still fun. It was still fun. Nice to see an Elorian again, uh, even though she's not super old like Gynanis. I think she says she's thirty. Uh, so not all Elorians are really old, and uh, I don't even know if she's a good listener. Uh, oh, this where we see stuff. We saw um, ships flying about. Uh, there's the corn dog vendor. What have I done now? Oh, there we go. <laughs> There we go. So the, the shuttles and stuff flying about. Uh, I want to go to Starbase 8. It looks kind of cool, doesn't it? It's a bit like Deep Space Nine, but grungier. <laughs> if that's possible. 
Anyway, so there we go. Yeah, a decent episode. It was fun. I quite enjoyed it. I quite enjoyed it. Um, but uh, we're halfway through. Uh, and we've got titles for the rest of the season uh, now. So I'll tell you them. Um, so that one was Starbase 80. Question mark, exclamation mark. Uh, next week is Of Gods. On Wikipedia it says Of Gods and Angels. But I've seen it as Gods and Angles. So which is right? I have no idea. Oh, pardon me. Anyway, um, episode 7 is fully dilated, so I'm guessing somebody's going to give birth. <laughs> uh, I wonder if Worf will be in that one. And um, um, what's the face? Keiko O'Brien. Congratulations, you have dilated 10 centimetres. You may now give birth. Anyway. Cool episode, that. Uh, I think it's Disaster, is that episode, isn't it? Uh, number eight, Upper Decks. Episode eight is called Upper Decks. So I'm guessing that's the bridge. Uh, number nine is called Fisher Quest. There's all spelling mistakes in this list on Wikipedia. Uh, they spelt it Fisu Quest. Uh, but I'm guessing it's Fisher Quest. You never know with Lower Decks, do you? So that's obviously got to be something, you know, the, the main story arc. And then the last episode, remember the last episode... Of um, Picard, um, season three was called The Next Generation. Um, well, the last episode of um, Lower Decks is called The New Next Generation. So that'll be cool. That'll be cool. Only if they all get separated, split up, promoted again, uh, and get sent off to the other missions, other ships, maybe. I don't know. But uh, I don't know. But uh, hopefully, we'll get more. There's been, I think there's been rumours of maybe going into live action. But uh, there's lots of rumours about Star Trek lately, so I don't know what to what to believe and what not to believe. But um, anyway, I'm enjoying it so far, um, and I'm, I want to know what's happening with these fishers. Who's, um, who's behind it? Because, um, you know, we learned last week that artificial, these fishers, so somebody's behind it. So, who is it going to be? Um, we shall see. I'm sure... I, don't, I can't think of anything because I'm stupid. But I'm sure some somebody with a you know an encyclopedic knowledge of Star Trek uh, has theories <laughs> that make sense. Anyway, right, so we'll leave it there. We will leave it there. So, as I said, next week's episode is... It's either of gods and angels or of gods and angles. I've seen it spe spelled both ways. We will see, won't we? So I wonder if that's going to be it. I wonder if Apollo is going to return again. Maybe not. Oh, uh, dear. Anyway, right, so there we go. We'll leave it there. Right, I'm big again. <laughs> right, so um, uh, before we go, just, again, like and subscribe and share the videos and all that stuff. Um, and tell your friends all about that old Yorkshire geek and what a cool guy he is and it, you must watch his videos and subscribe to him and all that jazz. Or maybe not. But anyway, uh, we'll leave it there. So, thanks for watching. Wherever you are, look after each other. And until next time, I'll see you there. <laughs>